Craig, welcome. As we look at growth you, funds, as we look specifically at growth funds, specifically at large cap funds, as I read your study, they do even worse. That's correct. They did last year yes. for, for a very specific reason. Um, and, and the reason is that the concentration of, of, our, of our growth index was such that unless you were, as a growth manager, significantly overweight in a very small handful of stocks, all of which we, we can easily name, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, which are very large and prominent in the growth index and which happened to perform very well, if you didn't do that, it was very difficult to underperform, to outperform a growth benchmark last year. Uh, in other years, when the performance of, in the growth stock sector has been more evenly spread out, stock picking has been somewhat easier. But when the very largest stocks uh, are the ones that dominate performance, it gets to be much harder. And that was that was definitely the case with growth managers last year. Yeah, last year, great for growth stocks, as, as uh, is reported. The growth index was up 33 percent, but 98 percent of all growth fund managers failed to outperform the benchmark. They keep saying this. They keep saying that in down markets, we're going to do better. They keep saying in volatility, we're going to do better. But they don't. Why not? But they, but, but they don't. You're, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, theoretically, a manager who raises cash ahead of a market decline uh, provides a source of value added. So it, it's certainly fair to say that there's a potential for value added when the market declines. The problem is uh, you have to know in advance that the market's about to decline. And as we all know, that's, that's a very difficult, uh, very difficult insight to come up with. More broadly, uh, Tyler, I think the, the answer to your question really is that by and large, the investment management market in the United States is almost entirely professionalized. What that means is there's no source of outperformance for the outperformers other than the underperformance of the underperformers. Uh, and what that means is that the average manager uh, is competing against people who are just as skillful and just as well informed uh, as, as he or she uh, themselves, uh, which means there's, there's no available outperformance for active managers as a group. Right. And since active managers incur costs, research costs, trading costs, et cetera, that passive funds do not incur, uh, the, the active managers operate at an, at an inherent disadvantage, which, which just accumulates and builds uh, over time. Craig, the, the sort of flip side to all of this is that indexing has obviously come the go-to strategy to such an extent that Jack Bogle has warned it's its own bubble. So what do you say to people who don't want to get sucked into active management and underperform, but they don't want to get sucked into an indexing problem that could be due for comeuppance down the road? Yeah, I, I, I don't think indexing can fairly be considered a, a, a bubble, Kelly. I mean, when, for example, let's suppose uh, uh, someone puts a, a billion dollars into an S&P 500 uh, index fund and they're going to trade at the close tonight. Uh, Apple is roughly 6% of the S&P 500. So of that billion dollars, 60 billion is going to, or 60 million rather, is going to go uh, into Apple. Apple is 6% before the trade takes place. It's 6% of the trade, and it's going to be 6% tomorrow morning. So the fact that money is flowing into, uh, into index funds uh, does not in itself create uh, the, the appearance of a bubble, especially since the money is probably coming out of an active portfolio, which was probably more concentrated than the index fund to begin with. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the, my, my answer, I suppose, would be is that, that there may be difficulty with, with index funds, uh, but the, the, they, they don't distort prices in the way that their critics uh, sometimes suggest. Fair enough. But it's the only thing I worry about is that yeah. it's so consensus uh, to own index funds. You know, is there part of the story we're missing? Craig, your phones are going to be ringing shortly. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> Craig Lazar. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Thanks, Kelly.